Hey guys, you want some inside baseball? This is the fourth time I've ever done the video for this. Why? Let's not get into it. It's upsetting. This is the Duuk. I think that's right. Du Duuk. I don't know how she would pronounce it. Audio. Some Chinese name. I don't speak Mandarin or any other flavor of uh, Chinese language. So if you know what that means in Chinese, put it down below. I'd love to know. T4 Plus. Is this better than the T4? Does the T4 even exist? I have no idea. I don't know. I saw this on Amazon. $99 for a phono preamp that does moving magnet and moving coil and has all these loading options with tubes for $99. How can you go wrong? How can you go wrong? I'll tell you how you can go wrong in a little bit. But let's talk about what's cool about this. Lit VU meter. Big, cool, shiny red knob. It moves pretty nice. It has a headphone out, which someone might like. I don't like it. I don't listen to vinyl on headphones. It has, as I said, moving magnet, moving coil, and a bunch of loading options. That's cool. Has an aux input, so you could use this as a, a full preamp plugged into a power amp. That's cool. It has these cute little baby tubes. Little baby tubes. How small are they? Well, this, my friends, is a JJ12AX7 which is relatively small to begin with. That is smaller. Look how cute. Look how cute that guy is. Pretty awesome. What kind of tubes are they? These are GE, JAN, which is Joint Army Navy, for people who aren't tube nerds. That are, is um, basically meant that these were commissioned by the military back when tubes actually mattered to people and you needed them to make things function. And the tube is a 5654W tube. I don't know what that is other than a tiny little preamp tube. I'm not familiar with it at all. As I struggle to get this tube back in. You know, the last time I shot that, that went right in. Oh, and then I kicked the camera. Last time, right in. This time, struggle. Struggle is real. So there's a lot of cool stuff about this. Let's talk about what's not cool about this. What's not cool is that this cool big nut bot knob, big knob, that's not just for the headphones, as you might expect. That is for, that controls the line out. Why do I need that? That's stupid. Here's the other thing, as you may have noticed, there's an aux in. There's no way to switch. There's no button, no, no, no switch. To switch between the aux in and the phono in. So how does that work? Well, I had originally thought that you had them both plugged in, they both fed into the system, and if you had the aux in, device turned off, that's how you switch between it? No. Which I think is dumb, but it's better than the way that they actually have it. If you have something plugged into the aux in, disables the phono input. If the aux in were on the front, or you could plug it in, plug it, unplug it, it would make more sense. Um, but I mean, if you have this set up on your system, you have all your plugs coming out and your your RCA connections, what do you do, pull it out and unplug this every time? So that's not really practical. So it could be used as a phono, or a, a phono preamp and or just a regular preamp, but yeah, you're not probably going to want to do it like that because it's a pain in the butt. Let's talk about all, what really isn't cool is the way that this thing sounds. 
in my opinion. So I first plugged this into my moving coil system, which is a scout, a VPI scout plugged into a Denon DL301 MK2 low output moving coil cartridge, normally into a Hagerman Bugle 2 that I modified. That's this guy. There's a video on this. Go watch it. Plugged into the Noob Sound 2 preamp. There's a video on that. Go watch that. Um, plugged into the Shiite Vidar. There's a video on that. Go watch that too. If you, if you want to. I don't know. You don't have to. It'd be nice though. It might be fun for you. I don't know. Maybe it won't be fun. I don't know. Try it. You might like it. That gets plugged into Kef R300 speakers. The first two seconds of this, I thought it sounded pretty good. And then I realized, oh my god, there's no low end. Almost like there's a high pass filter where it's just passing through mids and highs and no lows. I don't know why they would create a product that has no low end at all. I don't know if it is an aggressive rumble filter or an, or an attempt at that. I don't know if it's just shoddy engineering. But regardless, there's not a lot of low end out of this guy at all, like upsettingly. Um, it, in terms of other sound quality, that's not particularly good either. The coherence, what I refer to as coherence is if you have any experience with phono preamps, sometimes during some musical passages, everything will kind of start sounding blurry and hazy. You won't be able to hear the instruments. It'll just kind of sound bad. This, pr this is about the worst that I've heard with that. Changing, I changed from 220 to 470 to even 1K, trying to make it sound better. None of that helped much at all. In fact, I didn't really notice much of a difference at all between these. And so I kind of gave up on this thing as being a phono preamp. And so I tried to aux in because I'm like, well, maybe just the phono section sucks. Maybe the aux in is different. The aux in sounded horrible too. So not wanting to give a full half-hearted review of this, I plugged this into the moving magnet system comprised of a Fluence RT82 with the Ortofon OM10 cartridge into the Emotiva TA100 into Cambridge Audio Minx XL speakers and it had the exact same problem. It had um, not a lot of low end. However, on that Emotiva you have bass and treble control so you could pump the bass a little bit and get a sound that sounds decent you're still not, it's still not gonna sound great in terms of the coherence. Uh, the imaging is okay. I mean, it's, it's usable. I mean, if you, if you absolutely need a phono preamp and you only have a hundred dollars to spend, I'd probably tell you to buy something else. Um, the, this, this has tubes. Uh, it doesn't really matter because it doesn't sound tube-like whatsoever. There's no warmth. There's no roundness. There's no three dimension, three D uh, dimensionality. Dimensionality is that a word? Sometimes I say words, and then I'm like, is that really a word? Say, yeah. I don't know. I'm not gonna say it again because the more I think of it, the more it sounds stupid. There's not a lot going on here. For ninety nine dollars, your best bet is to not buy this. Sorry, Duoc Audio make a better product I mean it looks cool if you want something that looks cool and like not plug it in or maybe just plug it in and then turn this up so the the VU meter goes and that you show that to your friends and be like oh look but like plug it into something good because they're not going to be impressed with the sound at all this is a no-go don't do it buy something else and $99 
is a low price point, but there's a lot of good stuff out there for $99. If you wanted to spend an extra $21, you can go and buy this. That sounds good. It doesn't have tubes, but it sounds better than this thing with tubes by a lot. They're both made in China, so who cares? 20 bucks? I mean, I guess 21 is 21. 121 is 22% more than this, but it's definitely worth it. Save up the 21, 22 extra dollars and buy the Emotiva. Or buy, I don't know, there's also Project, I think, make some $100 phono preamps. They might not do moving coil, but if you spent multiple hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on a moving coil, $99 isn't your budget, probably for a phono preamp anyway. Do you have one of these? Do you like it? Comment down below. If you think I'm stupid, tell me I'm stupid. But to my ears, on two different systems, this is not good. And if you like this, you probably haven't heard other stuff. Sorry. That's the way it is. Have a good day.